thanks for watching or listening to VIP Boxing's Bell to Bell. We're on episode 110. Whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on iTunes or Spotify, leave us a review telling you think we're good, rubbish, whatever you think. Uh, with me, Steve Lillis, is, uh, as always, he's at the bottom of your screen tonight. John Evans. John, good evening and thanks for coming on, mate. Uh, there in oh, Chatterton, Oldham, I don't know where it is. What, what area you called it anyway? <laughs> But don't look class Chatterton as the, the posh part of Oldham. Posh part of Oldham, okay. <laughs> there is such a part. There must be one road then or something that has big detached houses and, and you <laughs> down there that no one can get to. Must be a security People... gate at the bottom with, with five security guards and six dogs at 24-7. People queue up to walk <laughs> up and down it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, tonight's special guest. Um, this fella, he, well, I think it's fair to say he eats, sleeps, breathes boxing. Developing into a top trainer, he works with amateurs, professionals, uh, as a fighter, British flyweight champion, and I think challenge for the Commonwealth title, Liverpool's very own Paul Edwards. Paul, thanks for coming on. First time on the, the show, and it's great to see you again. I used to know you very well when you were boxing. I found only the other day on Facebook, a picture popped up on my memories. Of yeah, you marathon. did the Liverpool half marathon about five, six years ago. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, no problem. Mate. Thanks very much for inviting me on. I it's watch. Good. I watch a lot of the shows. Yeah. Yeah. You're heavily involved with the Solly still, aren't you? Yeah, I've. Uh, I haven't left Solly to be honest for yeah. thirteen years. You live over the road as well, don't you? About ten I yards live, away. I live. I lived on Salisbury Street. Yeah, that's yeah. where I live. On Salisbury Street. Now I only live half a mile away now. Oh, so you've moved. Because you. I remember the last time I was there with Box Nation when. Oh, do, 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 oh, they have a heavyweight fight. Lennox Lewis went to the Solly. Yeah. And you were living over the road, literally. You come out and you was a turn left and cross the road. <laughs> your house was a second on the right. Incredible. And you're training pros now and Sam Maxwell's with you, isn't he? Yeah, Sam's come back. Yeah, I, I coached Sam amateur. Didn't I? I coached Sam for, for a few years. And then I started them off as a pro, but I just didn't have enough time then. To coach him, which is a bit sad, and he, he, he wasn't happy at the time, but it happened. Now he's back home, so we only look forward now. And you've got that fourth fight with Dalton Smith. Um, he's got he's cut, and suppose you've got to wait for that now, haven't you, to get a date? Yeah, it's been delayed now. It's been delayed. They're saying the end of May or early June. So we're just waiting for the final days. Hopefully, we'll have it this week, but some fight, hadn't it? It's yeah, going to yeah. be a great fight, you know. Eddie, is it, is it such a bad thing for you, for you and Sam, that it has been delayed for a couple of months? Because he's not no, been John. there with you too long. It's probably a good thing, is it? Yeah, it's good. We're, we're happy, really, because it's all signed, sealed and delivered. So it only gives us... It's worse for Dalton, anyway, put it that way. Yeah. But Sam, Sam's only going to be better. I believe, like, you know, the more we work together and... Because we only had a little... Well, we had a few months before his last fight, but... This fight's going to be nearly a year, so, yeah, he's in trouble. Does it drive Sam on? That, and I don't miss, you know, Sam's had an incredible career, amateur and professional. And if people watching and don't know who Sam fought as an amateur, look it up. Ten rounds over two fights with Lomachenko, says it all. And so many W, the World Series of boxing fights against good, good fighters he won as well. But... um does it drive it on that if, if, if it did not happen for Sam in this fight, that it would be a mass, a long climb back for him? Does that spur him on at all? Yeah. Yeah, he, 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 he realises, he knows what, what, you know, how big this fight is, how big it is. And he's got that glint in his eye. He's got that. He hasn't he missed saying, and I know he hasn't missed one session. He's always early because he used to always be late. But he's been <laughs> early in the sessions and he is fired up, you know. He's easy to coach. To be honest, he's easy to coach. You know, we've got a great relationship. We're a great relationship outside the gym, but more importantly, inside the gym, you know, when we're coaching, he listens the, and he, uh, he works hard. The one thing Sam's got as well, no matter what's happening in that fight, he's got that right hand, hasn't he? Because yeah, I don't. People talk about big punches and and things like that. I don't think Sam gets any credit. Sam can bang, can he? So no matter which way that fight's going, <laughs> he's always got that opportunity to. To just turn it round in a split yes, second. He's Sam, Sam, both hands. Sam, he's, he can knock you out with both hands. Yeah. Sam stopped. I can't remember his name. It's just gone up my head. Two genuine good fighters who, who hadn't been stopped before, and Sam stopped a pair of them. 
Yeah. yeah he's just shows how big of an Italy is. Just one last question on Sam before we crack on. Um, it's something I've always discussed with people. Do you think he should have turned pro a couple of years earlier? Yeah. Honest answer, yeah. Just, just when, when, when I was, when I was, uh, let me think. The year he won the ABAs, the year he beat Josh Kelly, he, he won a silver medal in the Europeans. He beat Selo, he stopped Selimov. You know, I miss Albert Selimov, yeah. the Russian who was, you know, he was some fighter. I think that was the year to strike. But because he was on a ride, he was going, he was going that far with GB. He was loving it, you know. And then the WSB come along, and in that first year of the WSB, they was all on serious money, weren't they, for a year of it? Yeah, they were living a dream, and that's all we <laughs> was. The WSB first come out, they were earning big money. Yeah. So fights, like, but Sam done well, isn't he? Obviously, then he got stitched up a bit with the Lomachenko's course fight. <laughs> He's telling yeah. that story, yeah. We'll have to get Sam on one night to tell people that story again, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to crack on now with a podcast. It's six three-minute rounds. John has his bell to ring. He has a clock. And I hope you don't mind, John. I've got the first round this week. Yeah, you go, Steve. You go. Are you ready, mate? Ready when you are. Yeah, I tell you what, it's, did he get it right? Um, last week, one of the big stories in boxing we're looking back on is Joshua Buatzi moving to Boxer uh, to, and Sky from uh, Matchroom and... Sorry, uh, Matchroom and Dazone. I just wondered... You know what? I get why Sky's a bigger platform. He's going to get a wider audience. But to think he turned down Bivol, a seven-figure purse, to fight possibly Dan Aziz, undoubtedly for great money. I'm on the outside looking in, you know. But I find that quite... I'm quite disappointed he, he did that. He's been well... He's world-ranked with the governing bodies. We've been talked about him as a world champion in waiting. And he's going back to have domestic fights, it seems, for now. Um, that maybe he'll prove us all wrong. And, you know, he, he obviously wasn't happy at Eddie Hearn matched the offer he was getting from Boxer, but obviously wanted some sort of extension. I'm just, I just think Joshua should have taken the Bivol fight. I just don't think what, why he goes back and fights Dan Aziz when it just seems that his career has just been slow burning to me. And I wonder when it's ever going to take off. You boys might disagree. You may agree. I, I think he, he's done it backwards, Josh. Josh Joshua Boazzi should be a, a bit of a superstar, I think. From that Olympic cycle, nobody's broke through. There's nobody capable of carrying a big show or who's drawing a big crowd. And Boazzi's got everything. I, I, I still think he's probably the best, like, most talented light heavyweight in the country. I think he's got everything. But no one knows who he is. So I can see, him, I can see why he's gone to the sky, but he should have got the big push five years ago, Boazzi. Um, I saw Macklin list his possible next five opponents, yeah. and it was Dan Aziz, a Richards rematch, Lyndon Arthur, somebody yeah, else, yeah, and then Bivol. Yeah, be too Smith, old then. Yeah, I, I, th I think he can't moan the fact that he's had that. Where he's been offered that world title yeah. shot. He's been offered the seven figure some world title shot because all he was going on before, so he supposedly got offered that. Was giving me shot, giving me shot, and then obviously with it, what's happened? He's been offered it. I just yeah. don't, that doesn't make sense to me. I think he's jumping ship as a bit of an excuse. Maybe, you know, we talk, he talk, he does talk like, oh, I want to be known as world champion, I want to be this. It's all, and then he started saying the business, he started to mention like business a few times now. So, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I think a lot of it, it seems, was to do with Eddie, Eddie Earn wanting extra two or few fights on the contract. So, look, if he beats Bivol, I know promoters get a rough time, but if he's delivered the Bivol fight, Giving him a million, I think Eddie might be. be yeah, what does he expect? What, what does Duarte expect? I don't, I don't get it. That, yeah. That's not, that's not unusual, is it? That's no, no, that's standard. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not as if it's something new to him, is it? He, he must have knew, no, not if he gets a world title shot off Eddie, yeah. he's going to obviously stay with him, isn't he? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I don't understand it. To be honest, I can see why he's done it, but I just think he's done it years too. He should have been. Instead of crying about not getting his shot, he should have been crying about getting built up years ago and he wouldn't be in this position. But it's a shame how Josh's career is going. It's a surprise. Like, it was, I'm very surprised by that, mate. I, I, yeah. didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't expecting it at all. Yeah. Round two, um, this is a, this topic, Fury and Usyk, John. It's a, it's a topic every guest seems to talk about. It shows it's on people's mind, whatever's going to happen. Paul, it's your first topic tonight, so give us your take on what you want to say about the fight. When, if, what? 
Well, I, I think I, I'm the only one who I've spoke to around who really fancies Yusuf. Obviously, I know I know what he's going to say, but I really, I really fancy Yusuf. I thought Fiori, but Fiori's clever than what he talks, isn't he? Sometimes he's saying I'm going to lean all over him, I'm going to put all my weight on him, but I don't think he's going to do that. I don't. I think he's just going to try and box his ears off. And if he does, I think I think Fiori's favourite. But I just got a feeling that Yusuf, as people are just underestimating, he's supposed to talk most of the size. Do you know Yusuf is exactly the same size as Big George Foreman? The same width and everything. Everything is exactly the same. Big George Foreman. People are saying Yusuf's this tiny fella. If they're listening to Fiori. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, we were discussing last week whether it's going to go on and there was that cryptic tweet from Frank Warren over the weekend. Oh, Arsenal go eight points clear and now big news to come. So if it's going to happen, let's assume that it's going to happen at some stage in the next hundred years, wherever it's going to happen, you know, <laughs> I'll be happening next month. Look, I, 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 I don't underestimate music, but I just go with Fury's size, even though he's had trouble with the the big men, with, with smaller men. The bigger, bigger like fighter always. Them. I certainly fighter. don't don't dismiss Usyk, but what I, I, you know, going back, I'm just get, you know, like I'm a fan of Tyson, the fighter. I've said this on here before. I just get a bit bored with a brand Fury, all this. I'm not in training and all this sort of thing. It's just nonsense to think he hasn't been in the gym. Anything I new, to have, John? You you have to say every week on this, don't we? You talk yeah, about every week. Yeah, but thinking about it more and more, the people who give Fury more trouble, I think of the smaller fighters. Look at yeah. Steve Cunningham, Adi Mulver, the guy who was fought in Manchester at the Trafford yeah. Centre, Adi Mulver, and most people were picking Hay to do a job on him. You know? so maybe that might, maybe that might play into it. But I just think what you said at the start, Paul. I think he's got a pretty solid plan B. If Usyk's too quick and he's landing on him. I think Fury will just go to smother mode, make it the most boring fight, get on top of him and lean on him. I think that'll be his plan B. I think I he think might end up going through it pretty early. I think that'll work against Fury, me. I think that's going to work against Fury. Yeah? Yeah. I think Why? Fury, the only chance he's got of beating him is boxing him because he's too big and too rangy, that honestly. I think Yusuf will like that, getting inside, and he's clever, and he's a strong man. You know what he's about? He's some man that Yusuf, you know. Yeah. Although Fury is as well. I do love Fury, yeah. you know. Yeah, oh, well, round three, um, Paul's going to earn his money in this round, which is zero money for doing this, but, <laughs> but go on, John, your, your first topic. Yeah, Paul, perfect guest to have on this. It's yeah. Is it coming up to five years now, Paul, since, was it Nathan Qualless, the first ever pro out of the, the Solly? Yeah, it's and, five years this year, yeah. But, but I thought you'd be a good person because... Amateur coaches can go pro now. You know, that rule changed a few years ago, didn't it? Yeah. What's for, What differences do you find? And do you find, say, you've, you've bought a kid from being 12, 13, up to 19, and then he goes pro. Do you have to have a sit-down talk with him about things are going to change now, or do you try and carry the same football manager-speak philosophy into professional boxing? How do you go about it, and what are the differences? Well, this, this is a great question. It's a, it's a great topic, really, isn't it? Because... It's not too much change, to be honest. I find, I find, I've only just, obviously, when five years ago when we started, it was just something brand new, something that I've always wanted to evolve. You know, you, you evolve, you've got to evolve with the sport, haven't you? But as far as coaching them is concerned, you get to spend a little bit more time with them. But I did warn the fighters before and said, look, you know, you're going into the pro game now. This is a business. And they sort of shocked at the start, but... That's what you've got to realise. You're going from amateur pro, amateur to pro. It is completely different. Yeah. Do you find um what what do you think the is it the business side of it you, you find the most difficult or is it the step up in conditioning and and toughness? At what what's the most difficult thing well, to get across? I to find them? that the I found the conditioning and uh, coaching methods to be easier because you're spending more time with them than a professional. So I found that transition with the fighter to be easier because I could focus more time on them. I could see them every day. Yeah. You know, they yeah. didn't have time to slack or go home and, you know, and I'm not seeing them day by day and stuff. So, yeah, I found the business side a little bit more difficult. For, not for myself because I was lucky enough to, well, lucky enough, I was, yeah. I was in the game, I was a professional. So, but, but getting that, like, getting across to the fighter about the business side, that's what I struggle with that. I struggle with that at the start. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you find, you know, obviously you're training fighters at the moment. Maybe you're going to develop some management and, and further expand in the professional side of the game. Do you find, do you, when you fight a professional fighter, say Sam Maxwell comes in and, you know, something's going on with his management team with Nelson and more about the fight and their stress, maybe about money or when the date might be. Do you say, and obviously they can tell you that, do you stress as well over that? No, not really. Not really. His manager, David, when Nelson, we were speaking about then, he's spot on. You know, he's brilliant to him. He, he's he's going to be he's gonna be uh, big in the game. You know, he's a good guy. Uh, he, he helps Sam a lot. I just obviously speak with him and go, hey, but I just focus totally on the boxing, me. Yeah. If they need my help, or if they ask me, which they do sometimes, I'll tell them what I think, you know. Yeah. Do you see yourself as a manager and moving more into the professional game, or do you love the amateur game too much where you can't leave that solely every, every Yeah, every I, I've took a few days off the scene and in the gym overnight now, but I, I love it. I love the amateurs. I've just been this weekend, I've just had two lads fighting Saturday. I had Blaine Saturday night, yeah. and then I had another kid's cat in Carlisle Sunday morning, all winners. So I've had some weekend, like, and my little lad, my lad won a cup final as well. <laughs> <laughs> So it's been great. You love it. You just like you. I can, as I said at the start, I've known you for a lot of years. And I know what boxing is to you. you. You, how was it with your wife at home when you're out with Blaine? Then suddenly Sunday you're going to Carlisle at the crack of dawn. Yeah, do you know what? How long have I known you for, Steve? When I first met you, Steve, wow, well, when was that? It was a long time ago. That way, yeah. Exactly. yeah. But she's look. You know, I'm very lucky to have to have my missus. Like I'm very very lucky. Yeah, uh, she, she supports me all the way. She she had me tea waiting for me when I come home Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, we can, you can, we're on, we got three minutes up there, John. I think we've gone over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're running over every round tonight. We're too good. You're too good at chatting, boxing, Paul. Right, we're <laughs> going to keep you busy again, Paul. Mersey Boxing B. I want to know what's happening in Liverpool, what stars there are we haven't heard of. Um, you can say, I mean, I like Brandon Dale is one of the best fighters I think nobody's heard of. You might disagree. I was just going to say him straight away, yeah, Dale. He just yeah, you tell us out. about what's happening in Liverpool. Amateur and pro, who's coming through? You know what? It's it's found its place again, Liverpool, amateur and pro. It feels like it's just going through the roof. I feel like there's some great professionals. Dale comes straight into my head then. He's flyweight, super fly, he gets saying Chris Williams. He's some fighter, him, you know. He's some fighter, and I do believe when he gets his chance, they all he will take it, and he'll go far. But it's just tough, isn't it? It's just tough getting that chance. Uh, amateurs as well. There's some obviously McGrail we were talking about there, and, and my fighter I've got to mention him. Obviously Blaine Arnold, he boxed Saturday night. He was he was outstanding. He's just getting to the pro game now. He's just getting used to it. I can see him going through the levels. Uh, what's his what's his, Odell Kamara who boxes for us? Sorry, he, he he's won seven national titles. He stopped most of his opponents on the way. He's 18. He's, he's in the ABA elites now. And he, he's a special fighter. I believe he can go all the way to the top. We've got a great few fighters in the pool. And it, and it's... The ABA is now is like it used to be back in the day. To get out of the areas, most of them are getting to the finals or winning the titles now. Yeah. Any any other young amateurs in Liverpool? Any other clubs who, are, who you think are decent? Jack, with- Jack Turner, a lad from Croxton. I think he's just turning pro with Joseph McNally and Declan. He's an absolute animal. He's, he's, he's a special fighter. He stopped a few on his way to ABA. I think he got disqualified in a final. He loves it. He loves it. He loves it. Do you, want, do you know him, John? No, I've not seen him, but I'm going to look. If someone's getting disqualified and stuff like that, yeah, I'll look him up. Yeah, I love that. Final, but he is an animal. I think, I'm, I'm, sure he's just going, I'm sure he's just going professional now, but he is, he is a great fighter. Someone I, I like from Liverpool doesn't get mentioned, but I've, I've mentioned him on here before. He's Hennigan. I think James Hennigan is good. Hennigan, yeah, he's another one. I coach James. I coach James. I'm sure I had a good few years with James. He, he has got a little something special as well, you know. Yeah. I believe he, he can mature to mature in a champion from a great family as well. He's a good lad. And I'm, good. Not, I'm not sure how far ago, but Conor Butler won the Commonwealth title at the top the, the title. I think was it your final fight or an ultimate fight that eluded you? Did you retire after the Commonwealth title fight? I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> Not long ago. You didn't, you didn't uh, get it that much, Paul. <laughs> I know, look, I'm, st- I'm just looking at myself <laughs> there. <before I'm... laughs> I think it was my last fight against Satchel, but I'm not on... It was, yeah, Kev Satchel, Connor yeah. Butler, Connor Butler, I made up for him. He's, he's some talent, him, you know. 
amateur. He was one of my favourite fighters, amateur. Really? He was classy, he had it all. He won, I watched him, I can't remember his junior year final. He took some kids apart. The kid was a national champion as well. Yeah. Well, round five now, and you want to talk, Paul, about best pros with no amateur experience. It's threw me right. I, I can only yeah. think of one, and I refer to a couple. Well, so this, this is my things. question to use. This is this is use. This is to use, really. I want to hear what you've got to say. Well, I'll tell you what, one come to mind straight away, Johnny Nelson. Yeah, yeah, that's the obvious one. I can't believe you've hit the easiest like, one. Oh, the easiest I one. think he won one or two amateur fights. Someone might correct me. I, I didn't check. He was a shocking amateur. He didn't have many, and he lost most of them. I think he was like disqualified in the first three or something. Totally he's mad. The other eleven one, one, he's two. the one that come to mind, and I'm going to put my hands up here. So I'm not one of these boxing journalists who bullshit you, and if he knows, doesn't know it, pretends he does when he looks on Google. I asked Steve <laughs> Bunce, and within two minutes, Bunce, he come up with three for me. Fabio Wardley was yeah. from the white collar. Yeah. Um, Brad Foster was a pure kickboxer. Yeah, yeah. That had been around boxing, no amateur. And Nick Blackwell was um, fighting unlicensed at 16, two men in a night, and turned over at 18. Yeah, I remember that. So yeah. That was the one. And all I could think of currently was was um, straight away was Johnny Nelson. Bunchy gave me the rest, so I'm not pretending <laughs> I'm doing it. So I don't know what John's yeah, d- up with here. Go on, John. Let's hear. How about Ant- mod- Well, I'll stick with a modern one. How about Anthony Yard? Twelve amateur fights. Not much amateur experience there, and he's going life and death. We better be having one of the fights Is he of the year. Have Twelve amateur fights, Yard. Yeah. I tell you who I don't think might not have had many amateur, and I'm going way back here. And a lot of people might not have looked at his career if it's for younger people. If it's from my generation. You know what? I'm not sure how many Dennis Andrews had. And he was a three-weight world champion. I think he got... I I'm know sure he got beat when I was a oh, kid in the London finals. I don't think he had many out. And he won and a three-weight world champion. And Dennis, at the start of his career, you wouldn't have had a penny on him winning the Southern area when you looked at him. I was thinking about it myself, Chris Edwards. God rest his soul. Oh, Chris Edwards, right, Pops, yeah. He went on to win the British title a few exactly. times. I think, I think he... I mean, he one or two amateurs, I'm not too sure. He was how about, um, how, Fred, was, sorry, go on, how about our favorite fighter, Denzel Bentley? Him and his mate taught each other how to fight with a pair of boxing gloves on a tennis court. Really, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he went to a market stall, they bought a second hand pair of boxing gloves, and they used to offer anyone from a block of flats out on the tennis court. Sure, he was in the ABAs though, Denzel. No, Ooh, I don't think he did much. Though. What, the one thing you can't do on this. On this bell to bell to John Evans, you cannot have a word. Off Denzel Bentley. Denzel Bentley. But going back to Chris, <laughs> are you sure about that? Because I can't Denzel Bentley, mate. Is. I'm here. With John, oh, big trouble. He'll be coming down. <laughs> He'll be coming down that M62 to Liverpool outside the <laughs> corner for a start. Then you're going to see John. I know where to find him anyway. You go back to Chris Evans there. He yeah. was a 31 of the fittest fighters I ever saw. Yeah. Wow. I, when I boxed him, when I boxed Chris, I remember at the weigh-in. I remember being at the weigh-in and weighing head to well, and he was lovely. And I thought, oh, he looks he looks done in here. And then I remember getting in the ring and he was like, ah, I was <laughs> just whoa, we changed. He said to me, he used to put a stone on, put a fly with really? a stone, yeah, 15 pounds. He said that's when I was like, oh, well, I used to put Jesus. like six pounds, seven pounds. Remember that? That was, I was there that night. It was the Olympia, wasn't it? Yeah, that was some fight, man. Yeah, yeah. He was a fit boy. Well, yeah, God, as you say, God, God, God bless him. Um, yeah. Really fit fighter. I didn't know that, but you know what? That's one of the best rounds you've had for a while on it because it was different. Uh, it was really yeah. different. So thanks for coming up with that, Eddie, top man. So, John, are we, have we overrun on that one or have we got another? Yeah, we, over, we overrun on everything these days. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man, but I'll blame you, John. Then. Right, well, final round, John. Yeah. We had a, the final of a VIP tournament at weekend, didn't we, for the, the Central Area title, and John Boy Kylie won. Um, I love these little tournaments, so I was thinking the Super Six was great back in the day, and Bernard Hopkins winning the middleweight tournament was great. Years before that, when he beat Felix Trinidad, which division in British boxing would you like to see a tournament in? Right. Now, my, the first thing that came to head was cruiserweight. Cool. With, cool. You know, with, they always cruiserweight fights never disappoint, and you've got Billum Smith, Chamberlain, Riakpo, all those guys. But then 
Super Bantam it is. And you could have a 16-man tournament. So just listen to this. Liam Davis, man. Liam McGregor, Shabazz Masood, Jason Cunningham, Mark Leach, Peter McGrail, Jack Bateson, Holpy Price, Brad Foster, Andrew Kane, Dennis McCann, Chris Bork, Brad Strand. Oh, wow. That for a tournament. I've done about a tournament. from the same gym. <laughs> Three from the same gym, yeah. Andrew Kane and Dennis McCann, mate. Imagine that. Oh. I'd say the one I looked at, I like the lightweight. You've got Gavin Gwynn and Frank Craig Woodruff. I'd have them rematch soon. Yeah. Anyway. Then after that, isn't that, you've always got Ryan Walsh, Mark Chamberlain, Reece Smalls, Sam Noakes. That's a fair old, that's a fair little... Well, you, you can put Reece Mould in with anyone and it's World War Three, isn't it? Yeah, yeah good fight, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? Super flyweight. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. I can see, obviously, Sonny Edwards, you know, he's on another level, isn't he? But you could just throw him in there, Sonny. Jay Harris, you've got a few of them, Brandon Diode, I don't, my own Blaine Island, so, uh, Galal Yafai. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know what? Him, no, no, Jay, what's, um, oh, what's his fighting? What's, who's Jay Harris fighting? You throw Marcel Blakeweight in there. There's a few good super flies, you know, you could get in there and get in the mix, I'm telling you. Yeah, when well, you go to light heavyweight, Callum, forget Callum and Buaxi, but you could maybe have... Well, yeah, you will. You have them. Callum, Jurassic, Aziz, Yard, Craig, Richards, Linden, super middleweight. There's a little four there, all about the same. Callum, Shelley, Callum, Simpson, and Boris Crichton. Who's the Callum Simpson or super middle? Super middle. God knows yeah, now. Yeah. I like him. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's good, isn't he? Boris, Boris Crichton's a, a warlord. Yeah. He, right. He's under. He's underrated guy, Boris. Dangerous, dangerous man for anybody. Man. Isn't he? Dangerous man. Dangerous fighter. Give him a little bit, yeah. Honestly. Yeah, but I tell you what, he's he's one of these guys. You look at him; he's never at a Mars bar in his life. He's like a fitness <laughs> model and makes YouTube videos of fitness. He's a beast, mate. He's a, he's one of those guys that's coming to take your head off. It's because well, there's there's Steve. You've just picked Jack Cullen's route back. Jack yeah. Cullen yeah. against Boris Crichton. Oh, oh! I tell oh. you what, you'd either go Boris early or Jack later on, wouldn't you? Hey, that Pacheco impressed me against Jack. I wasn't yeah. expecting that. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. I've been getting good, good reports back, but I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. It took people. him two minutes to work him out. It was yeah, brilliant, wasn't it? Even yeah. Steve Wood, who manages Cullen, said to me, it's a first, first round, they thought, oh, he's done all right, you know. But the second yeah. round, he just works him out. And he read him straight he away. He read him that. after one round. Pacheco read him after one round. See how calm he was. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah. I'd say, what about the super feathers? Zelfa, Dil Magani, Kakachi, Liam Dillon, Archie Sharp, Gomez or Giles winner, Akid Fierce, is it Yusef Kamari? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to. Yeah. Archie Sharp's got to get moving, hasn't he? He's just sitting in that WBO number one spot. Yeah. He's not in, Archie Sharp's not entitled to a world title fight. Archie Sharp should have to fight for it. And uh, getting him involved in something like that would be good. I think he's going to wait. It sounds like just sitting it out until it gets nominated and he has to have Has he been offered a world title before, Archie Shah? I don't know, but he's in that WBO mandatory, so the chance must be due any time. Yeah, I'm sure he got offered it a few years ago, you know. Did he? Not 100%, but I'm sure he did. But he does deserve, he deserves a shot. He does deserve a shot. I really? an eliminator, a final eliminator. Yeah, he, he, should be, I, I, sorry, he should be made a box, you know. He got his ranking. He won these WBO fringe belts. I think I agree with that. Paul's. That's not a bad. I know you. Wait, you should. Mate, I know what you're looking at. I don't know what you're looking. What you think, John? But give him a tough final eliminator to earn. Yeah, him. yeah, definitely. I don't think he deserves a world title shot. Yeah. No, he's, he's, I think he should have to. I know that he's been perfectly managed into that position, but he's not beat anyone to to warrant that. To warrant a world title fight, people fight all their lives for. And uh, yeah. Yeah, true. I, I, I maybe put him in with a winner of Zelfer and Dil Magani. There you go. Is he? Is he? Is he second? Is he? Uh, think he wants to fight for it? Yeah, he's been WBO number one for ages, and but the call to make of a Shaq or Stevenson is the one mandatory they haven't been stripped on. But inevitably, he will get nominated for it pretty soon, I should think. Yeah. yeah. Who's WBO yeah. super featherweight champ? Shaq or it? Is it been boxed? Is it Bacon? That's mm -hmm. not Bacon. Yeah. Uh, no, someone boxed it, but I can't remember who. Yeah, Shakur, what, Shakur gave it up and went up. Gave it up, yeah. 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 Is it one of them top ranked fighters? I'll have a look here. Uh, what was his name? I think it was a top rank. 
Fine. He boxed not long ago against the Australian lad, did he? No. Right, was well, it might not. Might. I'm looking now. See, we don't just invent, we know, we're not scared of looking up things here. <laughs> I'm looking here now. Should have done some homework. <laughs> I thought I'd know though, to be honest. We cover we cover a lot in half an hour on this uh, on this podcast. We cover more more than most. So yeah, Leo, you know, the WBO mate, the you, the great champion of the world part. isn't a crime. Boxing champions list. Here we go. This is on ESPN. So Neville yeah, Spence, Neville Spence. Call it the ESPN. Oh, and Matt Navarati. Of course, it's Navarati. Oh, oh Navarati. Yeah, right. come on. Uh, I yeah, of course it is. Okay, one of a, one of the more bigger names. Of, not the Australian way. kid. Was it my, one of the Maloney brothers? No, he's not my Bantam, is not he? Bantam and Fly. I'm sure he's just boxed an Australian kid for it, and he's done quite well. He hurt him and might have dropped him. Right, we're gonna have a look here. We're gonna before we wrap up, we'll have to have a look at this now. Yeah, come on, check it. I am now. He just got the shot. Emmanuel Navarretti, box wreck. Liam Wilson, Navarretti down in round four. He knew it straight. He didn't get the name, but he knew what happened in the fight. I tell you what, with that, we, we don't need any more boxing tonight. Eddie, come up with that. Oh. Yeah, Liam Wilson's Australian. The name deserted you. Hard fight. Ninth round stoppage. Close on, well, three rounds on one card, one round on another card. Yeah. And it was last month recently. You're the man. Well, with that, Eddie, thanks for coming on tonight, mate. You've been a brilliant guest. Uh, we'll get you on again in a net in a four well, after Sam's fight, maybe a couple of weeks after that, or the Monday yeah, okay. after that, and we can you can chat that. John. Listen, lads, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed been, chatting been, boxing with us been, anyway. Fellow boxing fanatics. Love it. <laughs> John, thank you as always, mate. And I'll let you both get back to what is it, Monday night. We'll see you, fellas. Thank you. Thanks to everyone time. else. For all boxing. Info, news and latest interviews, Amateur and Pro, across the north, click and subscribe. VIP, Boxing Promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.